Hello and welcome back to Asia Now. In this video, I will tell you about a fire official arrested in an entrapment operation for extortion, a female supervisor arrested for forcing women to do things to customers they don't want to do, a crazy string of robberies, HIV cases on the rise, a grandma crashes, a wedding, and much more. Let's start off with the Filipino peso exchange. Right now, one USD is equivalent to 58.86 pesos. Our main story, Female supervisor charged for trafficking. A female supervisor in Cebu is facing charges of human trafficking following the National Bureau of Investigation rescue of 20 women in a bar in Barangay, Banilat, in Mandawe City. The NBI apprehended Riza Novella on June 21st at JTV Bar, where 20 women allegedly fell victim to trafficking. Acting on a tip from a concerned citizen, the NBI agents investigated claims that the bar's employees were coerced into providing quote, extra services, end quote, to male patrons for a fee. Undercover agents confirmed the schemes where customers paid 600 pesos, just around $10, for unlimited drinks and were then introduced to female employees known as, a quote, customer care assistants, end quote. Most of these assistants described as single mothers or financially struggling women were targeted due to their vulnerabilities. NBI agents arranged for two assistants to accompany them to a nearby motel under the guise of a social outing. They were subsequently rescued and brought to safety. Following this initial rescue, the NBI agents conducted a raid at JTV Bar and rescued at least 18 employees. Social workers from the Department of Social Welfare and Development provided support and assistance to the rescued individuals. The NBI Cebu has filed trafficking charges against Novella on Wednesday and plans to pursue legal action against the bar's owners for their alleged involvement in exploiting and trafficking vulnerable women. Oh, what a sad story. You know, one thing I want to kind of talk about, I think human trafficking is very different than what I thought it was. Like, until this point in my life, I thought there were... I guess mainly younger, poor people being trafficked. I guess in my mind it was international trafficking where they go from one country to another, but I guess they happen on different levels. I'm not really sure what the definition is in the Philippines because I do see a lot of these types of charges being brought forth against many individuals. I think the the definition, I, I gotta look into it. This is gonna be a good uh, learning experience for myself as well. Regardless, people being forced to do something they don't wanna do is definitely a big no-no. Uh, let me know what you think of this story. Um, yeah, kind of uh, sad that, you know, of course everybody needs money. And actually our next story is gonna be about that too, about a grandmother who crashed the wedding in order to get some money. A 63-year-old woman was arrested by the police after she allegedly gate crashed in a mass wedding in Cebu City on Saturday. According to the police, the suspect suddenly arrived with another woman at the wedding reception and was looking for an empty table and bench. The suspect reportedly stood beside a visitor whose bag was placed on the bench. Because everyone was busy with the program and the bag was unattended, the suspect immediately took it and handed it to another woman who quickly exited the venue. Inside that bag are 20000 worth of jewelry and 10000 in cash. It is reported the suspect also arrested last March this year after not paying for her meal in a restaurant in Cebu as well. A sad story, I guess this woman is obviously in need of financial support, but of course it doesn't excuse to steal someone else's money. Uh, the fact that she didn't pay for a meal in the last uh, March also says a lot about her financial situation. Yeah, I guess, you know, desperate time leads to desperate measures for people in that situation. Our next story is actually from Mandawe City as well. HIV cases are on the rise. Mandawe City logs 513 new HIV cases and five deaths. This number is in stark contrast to 143 cases recorded on the same time frame last year. Incredible, so approximately 400 cases of HIV more than last year. This time, if you guys are in that region and are single and dating women, you better wrap that up and be careful who you're you know, dealing with. Our next story involves another robbery inside a mall. A mall in Karkar City temporarily seized operations after several of its stores were robbed on Saturday. The affected stores included a jewelry store, a phone store, and a pawn shop. Authorities are currently investigating the incident to determine the extent of the losses and conduct an inventory. Whoa, I guess this is why those malls have all the security because although you and I may not feel much danger when, I mean, I never felt any uncomfortable situation in the past five years in Cebu mainly, but there's gotta be a reason why there's so much security and why everybody's always a little bit cautious because stuff like this happens. It could be an isolated incident, but yeah, a mall got robbed. Here's actually some footage of it. 
Ah, nabilin pa? Wala pa ibot? Wala. Ah, okay. So, wak ta kibaw nakuha bang alahan, ani? Sa inyong bolt. So, wala pa mo makadisplay, ari. Wala pa mo makadisplay, ani, ani? Jewelry shop, ni? Jewelry shop. Jewelry shop, ni? Jewelry shop, ni? Speaking of footage, you know, driving in the Philippines can be a challenge, especially if you're coming from Western countries where things are a little bit, I guess, more organized, if you want to say it. In the Philippines, it's more like organized chaos, and they know how to move and maneuver. Actually, all over Asia, they move in almost like schools of fish, and if you're too, you know, passive or cautious, you might actually get in trouble, and pedestrian uh, crosswalks or zebra crossings, as some people say, are not always safe. So here's a little trick if you're in, in the Philippines, you want to go ahead and do bring yourself one of these. Next up, fire official nab during entrapment. I was gonna read the article, but it's too long and uh, too detailed. So basically what had happened was a person was trying to become part of the fire department in Cebu and they met all the qualifications and submitted the application, in which case the supervisor demanded 400,000 pesos. So this person went ahead and told the NBI in which they did this operation of uh, entrapment and they paid the guy 200,000. As soon as the chief received that money, they went ahead and arrested him. This is obviously not a good sign for anybody working in that department, especially firefighters, right? Uh, people that have uh, to take care of other people's lives and stuff like that. You don't want, uh, obviously, tarnishes the reputation. I mean, I don't have to explain to you guys why that's a bad thing to bribe people or extort people for money to get a job, right? Uh, yeah, so that's that. In some positive news, this is just something I read quickly. A 25-year-old Kenyan engineer invented a glove that turns sign language into an audible speech. Whoa, how awesome is that? If true, imagine you can just do, I can obviously do sign language, but it turns it into audible speech. The other person can understand exactly what's going on. But then I wonder, how would they talk to the deaf person? And lastly, did you know that Filipinos are the most sleepless people in Asia? According to the 2023 study of consumer research and data analytics company, Insight Philippines had the most people in Asia, 56%, who had less than seven hours of sleep per day, followed by Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore, and Myanmar at 39%. Uh, I don't think this is a surprise for many reasons. Number one, um, I know that a lot of Filipinos spend a lot of time on their phone. Uh, number two, a lot of over like people that work in IT and call centers work overnight, so maybe their sleep patterns all messed up. Um, those are some of the reasons I could think of. The heat, the humidity, maybe it's too hot. I just think it's a lot to do with TikTok and all this stuff. And I think Filipinos are very consumed by social media, just like many other younger generations across the world. But apparently, they are the world's, at least in Southeast Asia, have the least amount of sleep. Let's take a look at yesterday today, where I read the most uh, talked about or interesting comments of the previous video. Yesterday's video was about how to spend your day in the Philippines, not to be bored, and to have some patience. I read that man's story, and I kind of went over how I spent my day in the Philippines. I also talked about a comment that I wanted to address about the channel's intentions and someone says Alex you do you if I don't like a specific video I shrug and move on I'll be back for the next video you're honest and fun so keep you doing you thank you yeah of course I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I appreciate you guys uh, giving me some feedback and type of videos you like uh, let's see you read another one someone says retired for the second time in 2020 to Cebu City and it took me about two years to unwind from my western hurry up attitude yeah yesterday's video was mainly about hurrying up and always having that mindset that I got to get something done all the time and the Philippine is a bit more relaxed and this person said it took them two years and that's why if you guys want to go ahead and write your comments down below about any video I love to hear from you guys if you take the time to write it I'll take the time to respond if you enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button hit that like button and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any videos and i'll see you guys probably tomorrow bye